In this lecture, we are going to learn about the object oriented programming. Okay, so you have heard about object oriented programming and how it is very beneficial for programmers. Okay, so here in this lecture, you will learn about how we define classes. Okay, how we define classes in C++. Then you will learn about what is what are the data members okay what are data members in class and then you will learn about the member functions okay what are member functions then you will learn about what is difference between class and objects okay so you will learn about the difference between class and objects and we will see it with one example of class which is called point okay so you will learn about classes object oriented programming very famous word object oriented programming so what it means okay we will try to see what it means this word object oriented programming in real world, so till now we have seen in C++ that we have many data types, okay? So we have seen that we have many data types like int, you have long, you have char, and so many other, okay? But if we want <clears throat> that we should have some real world when we work, Practically, we work on some real world data. Okay, so what happens in that case for example, if you are a coder and you are working on, let's say in a bank, so you will be working for a customer. Okay, so for that customer will be your object and his attributes will be important to you. So like his name. Okay, so name is the attribute of the customer. His age okay his account balance his account balance his sex so all these things you need to know about him okay so how we do it so one way is that okay you have them everything defined in a c fashion that okay the name of the person age account balance etc they all are defined as different data okay but in c++ the beauty is that the object oriented programming gives you the option of defining these data types too okay so how you do that this is a kind of class the customer is a kind of a class where what happens is that in that class you have certain attributes okay so for example our customer had name age his account balance okay his sex and so on similarly what happens if we take one more example of the code i have taken is that let's say we have a point okay a point in a geometric plane two dimensional plane okay so let's consider this example so we have a point okay in a two dimensional plane let's say its value is 3 comma 4 we can have some other point okay minus so it will be 5 comma minus 6 okay so this is another point okay so these are the points and you have to work on these points okay so for let's say that you have to have a program that finds out if your point given a point is it in uh, first quadrant okay so this is the first quadrant this is the second quadrant this is third quadrant this is fourth quadrant okay so where it lies okay something like this or uh, many other operations okay so how will you do it okay so one way is of course the function okay you write a function but Another way is that, okay, in function also, then you have to separately say x coordinate, y coordinate, and there is nothing to bind, okay? Bind both of the points together, okay? That this is the x coordinate and this is the y coordinate for that point. 
but in fact these x and y coordinates belong are the attributes of a class which is point okay so point is an entity okay in which your x and y coordinates are its members okay and then you can have many operations on that point particular point okay so let's try to see how c++ helps us define objects okay like point so we write we use a keyword which is known as class and class we say and then you give the name of the class okay so here you have a point so we say that class point then you open a bracket okay and then close it so it's very similar to kind of structure so you give the class point open brace close brace and semicolon so this is a class but at the very most simple class which has no data member in it and no member functions in it but what happens usually we want that our class has some attributes okay so here what are the attributes we have the attribute int x coordinate int y coordinate okay so for simplicity i've just taken int x and int y but it should be in fact float or double okay so that's fine now what we want of course when we make a point we would like to assign values to it okay that okay x is equal to 5 your y is equal to 6 okay so some point is there now which defines 5 comma 6 this is a point so we define this okay so we would like that okay when we make a point object we would like to set 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 its x and y coordinates so set x so what happens we give the attribute first okay so it has two parts so first one is attribute okay and then you have the operations on it so let's see how it is done so we have x coordinate we have y coordinate so then what happens these are the two entities in attributes in our point class then what we do we want to set those points so set x coordinate we want to provide a function set x coordinate so what happens and then you give an argument x and then we say that okay x coordinate is equal to x so this way we set the x coordinate of that point set y coordinate so we do so these are two member functions let's try to see the other member function what are the then we have we would also like that okay if you have got one point so what is the value of the x coordinate okay so how we get that so return int x coordinate get x coordinate so we just return the x coordinate get the y coordinate return y coordinate now we would also like that okay we should print the value so print point so see out x coordinate is this and y coordinate is this and finally we would also like that okay if there is a point we would like to find if it is in the first quadrant second quadrant or the third or fourth quadrant okay so these four quadrants where it lies so this can also be found out we would write a simple function member function okay so if x coordinate and y coordinate are both are greater than or equal to zero it is in the first quadrant if x coordinate is less than zero y coordinate is greater than or equal to zero it's in second quadrant and so on the logic is given okay so this basically helps us make a class okay so which represents a point so it has two coordinates int x coordinate and int y coordinate then we have some member functions set the value of x coordinate set the value of y coordinate similarly get the value of x and y coordinates okay and then print the x and y coordinates and finally get the quadrant in which that point lies okay so this is a class okay of point and we now know that okay how to find the how to write the attributes for the class and how to operate on them using member functions okay so this is clear so now what happens is so this is the class we now want so class is something similar to kind of int okay int is also a type of class okay data type that is integer value so similarly class when you define point so it represents a generic point 
but some instance of it should be there okay so like class point so now we will do point p1 okay comma p2 comma p3 so we give something similar to like int x1 x2 x3 so this is that we have three different integers so similarly we define point the class instance of point p1 p2 and p3 okay so these are called the objects or the instances of that class point so now let's try to see how we use this in our code so we have int main here we define a point which has x coordinate 3 and y coordinate 4 okay so now we say that okay how you define a class so let's try to see so what we do we say that okay point was the class name so something similar to int and then we define the type of the name of the variable int x okay so similarly i say that okay point p and then in point p now what happens we have the facilities some facilities are available so the first one is p dot set x coordinate okay and then you give this so that point p now has the member function set x coordinate then we set it to be xc similarly you can set p dot set y coordinate you give the argument y coordinate we can say that okay print the point okay so you do so we are now the dot operator so this is the dot operator that is used for accessing the member functions from that object okay so p dot give quadrant okay so this tells what so quadrant this tells in which quadrant the function belongs okay so these are the various things that are available for my class point now let's try to run this piece of code okay so we have our class we build it and then we try to run okay so let's see x coordinate is equal to 3 so we have a point whose x coordinate is 3 y coordinate is 4 and the given point of course because x and y both are greater than 0 it lies in the first quadrant okay so now let's see little bit so point so let's do minus 3 so now the point has become different it is x coordinate is less than 0 so try let's try to build this code again and run this so now you see x coordinate is minus 3 y coordinate is 4 and the point lies in the second quadrant okay so this was the basic idea about class okay so the takeaway points from here were that okay what we learned here we learned about class okay so class is a user defined type okay which represents some real world entity like for example our point so it had two attributes x coordinate and the y coordinate then the class also provides some member functions okay which operates on those attributes and can give you some useful information okay so this is about the class okay and this introduces you to object oriented programming okay then we also saw what is the difference between class and objects so class is a general type like a human being you me and other people are all instances of human being so they are all different but they all belong to the same category that is human beings okay so i hope you understand this so thanks a lot